I love the digital world, um, and it's not about reinventing the world. I've spoken to some people already about what I do, how I go about it. I'm not trying to reinvent the world in the means of the actual application or the devices that we're making. I'm just trying to manipulate software that possibly doesn't exist or doesn't wasn't intended to be used for certain functions and apply it to a clinical workflow that makes sense for you guys, makes sense for a lab, but then it turns into efficiency. Right, efficiency, we're all looking for time, people are booked out, especially in the ortho world. Um, this, this, what we do, if you understand how we do it, which is, which is the part that's missing in an education part, because everyone's talking about 3D printers, everyone's talking about face scanners, everyone's talking about intral scanners, but it's like, all right, you get it, what do I do with it? Or how do I maximize the use of all of that technology in one, in a certain um, application in dentistry? So, just a little bit about myself. My life before dentistry, I was talking to someone many kilos ago, um, but I used to be a professional footballer, many hair strands ago as well, uh, but that, that was my life before dentistry. I got into dentistry by accident, it wasn't really an accident, more so that I, 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 everyone knows Ange Postecoglou and Graham Arnold now, they were my, my national coaches at the junior level. So I played overseas in South America. I was Paramount of Power, the online SL here in Brisbane. That was my first professional contract. But I was at the AIS and all that for a very long time. But as sport, sport can take it away from you pretty quickly with an injury. So I got torn hamstring completely off the bone and that was it while I was in the UK at Hull. But um, uh, at 12 months where I came home and I got into dentistry, family, friends and dentistry. So um, I certainly wasn't going to be, I didn't finish school because I was, my life beforehand, so the only way to get through into dentistry, and I was good with my hands being a goalkeeper, we thought we'd give dental technician a go. I'm a bit of a digital nerd, I, by all means I'm not a software designer, I don't know anything about that stuff or how to build a computer, but what I do like is manipulating things that are available to us and do cool things with it. So I combine digital technology with my gadgets and all that stuff and I've just found something that I, super, I love a lot, and then obviously sort of my personality being quite out there from my background, sales and obviously education is what I love doing. So it's just a bad combination. I love what I do right now because it just brings all of it together. Um, but in a means of showing you guys what's possible. And like I said, the good thing about what I do and what I see when I'm in, I used to have my own coaching business as well, is when someone picks it up um, and basically not changing the way that you operate, it's just applying some of what's available to you and seeing the change, the way that clinics change their books around what we're offering is what's super uh, super exciting. So we're just going to go through Div's AI. So here we're talking about um, bracket bracket placement, things like that. My job today is not to teach you the theory on bracket places. That's why you have Van Dyne. What I'm here to show you is a software called Div's AI. All right? Div's AI, um, which is an indirect bonding system that's accessible to everybody in the world. Um, I'm going to show you how it works, what the uh, what it, um, what it offers, the workflow, the manufacturing process, whether you can do it in-house or not. All right, did they on? All right, so what it is, it's a company called Ortho Select. They also offer a split workflow and, and other model making of, uh, workflows, but essentially they were, they've been for around now for, what well, now, 20 years. Been around for a long time in the States, very big in the States, very big if you're using AO, so that's why a lot of AO um, American orthodontics recommend is because they don't have their own indirect bonding system. The beauty of um, with a um, Dips AI is that they created a system with no limitations. So you can use absolutely any bracket in the world. Doesn't matter what it is, uh, where it was made. Um, you can also um, use hybrid systems. So essentially, if you wanted to use AO brackets with 3M tubes, similar to what you've done, I don't know where your tubes came from. It doesn't matter. You can set up your own profile for yourself how you want your setup to be. They will, you can, and, and essentially you can have multiple profiles as well and essentially you can apply whatever is required for that patient specifically at the time by choosing your, your bracket library. They, they do say that they have 97% of the brackets in the world in their, in their library already, already. If they do not, all that happens is that you just give us your set of brackets and the very rare chance um, they will basically scan them in for you specifically and add it to your profile. You can have up to five or six different profiles um, on the way that you like your setups done. They will add it on to you. So we'll talk about uh, the onboarding and stuff like that. So the good, the good thing as well is you can look, um, incorporate bike turbos. I'm not sure if you talked about that. 
just yet, very briefly. So they're very important. It's the first system that has it incorporated in it. So basically, like indirect bonding, uh, sorry, like in, like doing indirect veneers and stuff and injection, this will create a slot in this in the actual tray where you can injection mold, uh, inject the composite and build up the turbo uh, so that it's all incorporated, which is really cool. Light ramps. Light ramps, yeah. So you can incorporate your CBCT now um, so that you can get effective treatment planning. Um, and like I said, um, the treatment planning is, is in real time as well. And we'll talk about that as well because you can do your own adjustments and things like that. Dibs AI, the best way I can explain how Dibs AI works is that it's very similar to uh, uploading a case for aligners in, uh, on your cloud or your portal. You submit the case, scans, all the information, CBCTs, anything you want, x-rays. What happens is they send it away, you know how it comes back planned for you, you can do your adjustments, um, and then essentially the AI part of DIBS is that it auto-generates the, the transfer tray for you, that's the AI part, because they already know your bracket library. So essentially it's, um, you submit your case overnight, it's within 24 hours, so if we submit it right now, overnight in the morning you would get your planning done. With your brackets placed right in the middle as per the prescription of the scan, uh, sorry, of, the, of that bracket, and then essentially you'll have a side-by-side, -side, um, a side-by-side -side where you've got um, the, where the brackets are right now, the T position now, and then the finishing position. No different to like what you would get like someone with Invisalign. You do your adjustments and it will real-time update, and then when you've accepted it, you press accept the tray and it will auto-generate the AI part, a tray in five minutes, so that you can export it for 3D printing. Um, in, in a couple of process in-house or outsource, which we'll talk about. Here's a little bit of a process of the dips um, and a couple of videos I'm going to show you because it's very visual, this. The hands-on will give you a good idea of what it is, but again, like I said, you've already done the theory, so we're not really learning the bracket placement. You can see that's very similar. You can import, you can adjust, you make those roots even more accurate by importing your CBCT. The 3D pitching part, the tray basically just slides in. We'll have another video a little bit more, more detailed on the lower part of the, this patient um, in the next one. But the main one part of it is about efficiency. Um, you're going to save a hell of a lot of time with this. You've all done it. Did everyone love doing that, that, that direct bonding? Alrighty, so uploading a patient. Did I, this is the cloud. I'm going to show you a more interactive uh, demo of this when, I, when I'm on the website. But essentially, um, you just upload your patient's name, your details, um, all of your photographs, and, and then basically we come in and show you everything that you need to do with, with this sort of system. It's no different to many. It's very simple. It's actually pretty underwhelming what you've got to do. Um, it's a drag and drop for your, for your STL files and a drag and drop for your images. Um, you have your own portal, um, and then essentially... In 24 hours, you will get this treatment plan based on what the prescription is. Now, you can change your parameters to say, like you would traditionally like your brackets placed a millimeter below the center point, higher, you can do whatever you want, it's pre saved. But essentially, you get this back, and then what you will do is we'll come and show you how to manipulate the bracket. You highlight the bracket, and then you can rotate them around just like you're moving teeth. Um, and you'll see the real time adjustment on the right hand side. Once you're happy uh, with your positioning, this part of it takes about three to five minutes to do. It's super simple because it's pretty much done. The AI part of the software also predicts what you're doing real time. So any adjustments you're doing, it starts to work out what you like. So it saves it for you. And then essentially you go into manufacturing. So you'll get the tray designed uh, in less than five minutes because the, the software knows exactly what your bracket size and everything is and the slots and everything like that. Couple of details on ROI and the means of in-house printing. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes to print because the profile of the bracket of those of those trays you can see is quite low. So it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes of print time on your more traditional printer. So like, um, who's got a 3D printer in here? Yeah, cool. If you do, is it what, what printer do you have? <laughs> yeah, you got a Sega. A Sega. Yeah, so you know the forms are considerably slower than the Sega. No idea. So traditionally, like the best printers on the market, or the more commonly ones known, are the Asiga, the Sprint Ray, the Forms, and uh, Accureta now. 
The Acura NR, the Sega, and the Sprint Rail, the same technology, they're the DLP, they're the faster one. So we're talking about that. The forms would take probably an hour to two the, the trays, and the more you add on it, more time, because it's a different system. But traditionally, about 10 to 15 minutes to print them. It takes about six minutes to wash them. Now, you've got to wash them twice because you've got to hand wash them because essentially you've got to make sure that you clean inside where the actual bracket will fit. You can't have any dust. If you did have a printer that prints out flash, you'll need to cut that flash away. And generally, that generates dust. So essentially, you just need to get a toothbrush with some water and just make sure that, that those channels are completely clear. The other thing as well is you need to have a compressed air gun. Okay, that's one thing that a lot of labs in, a, in, uh, in clinics don't have. So if you are building a lab or uh, are, lo are looking at incorporating a lab in a renovation, give me a call. Uh, I've got about 15 plans of labs in my, in my office at the moment. I'm not here to change your plans, it's just more so about like where PowerPoint should be, where airlines should be, where a handpiece motor should be possibly positioned, where your computer is going to be. Because if you're going to revamp your lab, you're probably going to make it digital, right? The other thing as well is cabinets. You've got to remember the size of these printers. They all open upwards usually. So usually a standard height of a lower cabinet is too low. So those are the things that I sort of just give your, your builder or your planner information to make sure that you future-proof yourself because you also need Ethernet, Ethernet ports in there because Wi-Fi might not be good through some of the walls. If you're going to rely on digital, you've got to make sure your connections are good. So if you ever need help with that, reach out for that because it's just more about me just putting red markers of where things should be. An airline is usually something that gets forgotten about. We're not talking about an airline for like a Cerec machine, but I'm talking about a compressed airline so you can clean. So you need one of those and then in five minutes of curing. I'm talking about five minutes of curing on the sprint rate because that's that's where Dips was developed really early on. So they've got the fastest curing unit now, but most curing units will cure this material in about 15, 20 minutes. They usually take a little bit longer the class two materials, which are going to the mouth because they have to be cured correctly so that they're sanitized and, and good enough to go on the mouth before, uh, so there's no contamination. The important part is what does it cost you uh, per arch if you were to do it at home? It's only going to cost you about five to eight dollars in resin material cost to print an indirect bonding tray. Okay? So five to eight, depending on which brand like forms has their own material, so an ID ID. IBT material um, and all the other companies do have it. So the common thing, it's just not very well used or not, it's not a common resin used in our country just purely because not many people are using it. But um, it's common it's amongst our sprint rate users because a lot of our clinicians are using that, that system. If you were to outsource your manufacturing, if you didn't have a printer, it's not the end of the world, doesn't mean you can't use this system. We are the, uh, the um, Australian uh, branch of uh, Australian New Zealand branch of Dibs AI. So um, essentially, once you export the, the material, uh, the tray, once it's been generated and you're happy with the planning, you can inside the software say outsource to APAC Laboratory um, um, at a click of a button, no different to sending a scan to any lab. We would get it. Um, it's more close to the three days, it's just four days if you're sending it to Hobart just because it does take two days to get there generally, um, just from previous experience, or if you're out of country like Wagga Wagga, um, things like that, we do quite a few for, for a client in Wagga Wagga. Um, but it takes three to four days for us to print it. It comes in a really nice little case in the arch, um, and essentially it's $40 lab per arch, lab fee per arch, okay? So uh, it's not a lot of money on it in it, but there is a there is a difference between doing it in house. Um, if you had a printer, there's a no brainer why you wouldn't consider doing it in house. It's super easy. So this is just the technique of putting them. It's exactly no different. So again, we talked about cleaning because you'll have to bring in there. Possibly it's important that it's super clean. I'll run it through twice. If you're using some brackets that have got some spaces in it, you'll need to remove the, uh, the aids in there. Uh, if you're using self-legating brackets like you had before, you need to close the gates when you replace these as well. And instead of placing them on the, on the teeth or the models, you just simply slide them in. That looks super easy. We're just gonna get a close up now on exactly the technique how to hold them, how to push them on the angle, and then obviously push them in. So grab them from the, the, the gingival side, place them in at the bottom at the angle, then you push them in. 
and then it's important that you come from the, um, the top part of it and force them down. You should see a clear, um, you should definitely see them touching very clearly right at the bottom of the tray and they need to be right up against it. We'll show you, you'll be able to see them very clearly in the tray itself. Two, if you need to put them on in an angle, distally to mesially, just purely because of the size and the shape. And it's important, again, when you squeeze them up against them. But again, it's super easy to do that. Once you've seen it or done it right once, you'll notice straight away um, how, when it's right in the started. If you've got movement in it, then you know it's, there's something wrong. A lot of the time when you see the movement, you just put the wrong bracket probably in the wrong spot. That's really what it is. And it's important because sometimes you can segment this where some of the teeth are not there, so it's important that you follow the sequence and things like that. So that's um, Ortho Select's um, YouTube channel, but that's essentially how there's videos there about planning, how to incorporate your, your CBCT into it, absolutely everything. So there's really a library of a step-by-step -step of everything that you want to do. You don't have to do CBCT, obviously it's more detailed, but um, it shows you how to do that. Website and dashboard demo, so essentially I'll bring that back up again. Here we go. So this is the da dashboard, just so that you can see before. Once you've submitted the case, you'll have your submissions here on the left-hand side. They'll also say like pending, or if it's ready for printing or ready for adjustment. So they have like the, the red, orange, and green light, um, green, green symbols along the side here. Um, essentially from there, um, what you do is when you, when you are ready to start printing, or you've got a case that's ready to go, you go over to the right-hand side. Um, and you've got a couple of options here. I'll just do one that I did the other day. I think it was blank. So these are all your submissions. These are the teeth that are either going to get extracted or are not um, visible in the mouth at the moment. So if you're excluding them, they'll be there. Your, your patient um, in data is here. Here are your STL files that you uploaded. The images that you uploaded, so no different to any portal. Okay, and then here is your trays you, you know, that you would uh, export to, for manufacturing. The other thing is you can invert the brackets as well. I'm not sure if you mentioned that, but you can invert them. It's labeled there. So if you're not the person inserting them, it's labeled that this bracket is inverted rather than you know hoping that it is if someone else loads it for you. You head back to the dashboard here. We also have a section here. You'll have an alert when you open it if there's a communication from DJI or ourselves to let you know that there isn't something that needs to be adjusted or something is not possible, you can communicate per patient or you can do open up like a, like a little web chat um, and discuss that as well. But I encourage you to go to the website because on the website they actually have like tutorials of all of the support procedures, in-office printing, tips and tricks, bonding procedures, everything that you guys would have learned in here as well, but they have it all in there. You can check the bracket inventory if it's in there now, that's a new add-on, so if your bracket is in there, you'll know that your onboarding will be significantly quicker, but if it's not, then we'll have to send it away um, and get them scanned. So here's a, a, bonding, a bonding session that was done. All right, the tray is already preloaded. It's as simple as placing it, ensuring that it's sitting down just like that. The brackets are already loaded and they've already got their, their bond, the etch in the bond has already been added, and you just simply cure it. Once you're done, it's just a matter of technique. You don't pull it all off on one side. You use a, um, a, one of those tools, a spatula or a probe, and you just lift it and it peels away and then essentially it's just, it's, it's placed in exactly where you designed it. You can see the composite in there. It's all done. It's as simple as that. It's chalk and cheese with doing it by freehand. Um, I must say though, and I'll add at this point, why, why is this not the norm in every clinic? Because indirect bonding just wasn't right. The technique, the software wasn't right. The bonding process wasn't right. Some of them would laminate, delaminate, and things like that. Whereas now, it's the whole the whole process is is what it should be when it attempted to come out many many years ago. This also gives the opportunity for clinicians to design it yourself, like you would do an Invisalign, an Invisalign case at home, or not that you have to take your work at home, but you can do that from anywhere. But essentially, because the templates like like your bracket, um, your bracket templates like this, or your attachment templates are in exactly where you designed it. Your hygiene team or your assistant team can actually, or your uh, therapist can then place this, knowing that 
it's going to go in the right space spot, and then once that's done, you can step in and do the rest of the work and check it. So that's where the increase is, is more about um, efficiency in the clinic, especially in the ortho world. They design, the clinicians design it, and they get their rest of the risk staff to, to place it. So this is the, the typical on onboarding process. So we have an initial call, um, which is about 15, 20 minutes to discuss what, what is it that you want to achieve, if, it's, if this whole software is for you. It takes about five days. That five day setup is just purely because we need to contact one of your staff members to get all of the item codes of all the brackets that you want. Then are submitted to, uh, to DITS AI. They actually then create a, an actual profile for you. So when it comes in, you choose that library and it automatically gets set up for you. If for any reason your bracket isn't in the profile, it just takes an additional five days. So just because it's got to get shipped over to the US, they've got to scan it. Um, and then it just takes a little bit longer. We then come out and do a, a training session with you and showing you how to do your software design after we submit a case. We submit a, submit a case for yourself and your patient remotely through Zoom together. Then we're there for the first insert and that first insert is more so about um, if you were outsourcing to us, we'll print it and bring it to your clinic because it's very important for these brackets to be placed correctly in the, in the train. So whether it's you or your team, we want to train as many people in your clinic to be able to be competent in doing it, because this only works if it's right. So essentially, we do that training chair side, show them techniques on bonding and removing and all of that. Um, and then if that, once it's done, um, we, we ensure that uh, anything that we need on the next going sessions, we'll do by Zoom remotely. But we're there for the first one to ensure that the process is done correctly and then you get the experience that it's intended to be. Alright, so you basically submit your brackets just in summary, onboarding, and then we talk about the pricing. So this is the one, normally it's $1,500. Um, Dibs AI actually coming out, the reason why it's considerably cheaper now for the setup, Dibs is coming for a, a ASO in March. So they obviously want to, they've seen the growth in this market um, and they've, they've reduced the sign-up fee um, by half. Um, it's in US dollars, so you pay 65 US dollars per arch. So there's actually quite a, quite a lot of clinicians that only just do one arch. So essentially it would only be 65 and then our conversion, I mean that's probably about 90 bucks I think at the moment. Something like that per, per arch Australian. Um, unlimited support, so you can ask us as many questions as you want, we'll be there for you the whole time. We have a no downtime guarantee on all of our equipment. What that means is if you buy our equipment and it doesn't work, we print for you for free until we fix your issue. That just happens with all of our stuff. Um, so essentially, if you had our equipment you need to trade to print and you didn't have it, we would print it for you at no charge. Um, and that applies to anything else that you needed to print if you had our stuff as well. Reach out through me. Our business cards should be in your box, both of ours, myself and Harmony's is in there, but if you want to talk to her about dips, by all means call her. Um, if it means equipment, I'm the person to talk about um, that side of it. But even if you wanted to learn or even just see the software in detail, like because we have demo demo licenses where you can we can show you the exact uh, process of moving and adjusting and, and, and all of that. She would come out to you just like a normal lunch and learn visit from a rep. We'll get out about 15, 20 minutes because that's all it takes to do it once you've received it. And she'll give you a go at the software on our demo license. So if you want to see it, by all means, reach out and we'll book a time.